Oh my god. Since we last worked on the server, it was basically a month ago. There were a bunch of other products that I needed to do first and I just put it aside. The last time we filmed uh, about this thing, we assembled everything and I basically closed it and then put it aside and, and that was it. And this morning I wanted to continue the adventure, the big big adventure. I have a bunch of stuff that still needs to go in, like the back fans and uh, the SSD or the, the M.2 NVMe and all of that. But before doing that, I wanted to boot it up, not necessarily to do stuff off camera, but I wanted to try if I can somehow get the signal to be recorded using this Elgato 4K 60S Plus, just to see uh, if I can screen capture the whole adventure of installing uh, FreeNAS on here, uh, which I can't, but we will get to that. However, in the meantime, I also wanted to control the fans because they are incredibly loud, as you might expect. And I wanted to do that using the built-in IPMI system, let's say. Now, <laughs> a bit funny, but in the last few videos, there were a couple of people pointing out that IPMI systems in general are very, very important for all this kind of server stuff. And they were wrong and right at the same time. I did know that these systems exist and that they are crucial. However, where they were right is that I used to believe that these systems were like a piece that you built into a server, essentially. That was what I thought what would be like the fact. That you don't have it by default, but you need to have some system or some piece that you, you buy and slap in, and then you have like a uh, off-site control of everything. That's what I used to believe, and apparently I was wrong. The Asus KRPA, is that right? Yeah, KRPA U16 has a IPMI system built in by default, which Asus just called Asus Control Center. Now, getting this to run, Run. That was a that was a huge shit show. So that was my endeavor of this morning. I just wanted to get that thing to run so that we can together explore it first of all, and then try to uh, turn the fans down because they're incredibly loud, and I wouldn't be able to film anything today with these fans running. The endeavor started by finding out what the URL will be, which wasn't that hard. It's basically the IP address that my router will give the server by default using DHCP. That's not a problem. However, it didn't go anywhere. So I tried to troubleshoot the whole piece here and it, it took like hours. And at one point I found in the manual of the separately available ASUS chip that gives you the IPMI ASUS control center capabilities, you can get that separately apparently, in the manual of that thing or that adapter or that module, whatever you want to call it, they noted that you need to boot the system using the included a DVD or CD or whatever and run a like a clean install to get it to run which is why I installed a freaking DVD drive in it which funnily enough also is from Asus when that didn't work and I can now take this one out again because I will never need that thing in my life again I did a BIOS update because who knows maybe maybe it's the BIOS it's not the BIOS I found out it's not the BIOS no after a solid three hours I found a reddit thread where somebody posted this comment there is no redirect from HTTP to HTTPS when you try to access the server. That was all. I lost three hours not typing HTTPS. You cannot imagine how loud I screamed. So now we have access, we can start playing around with the ASUS control center and try to control the fans and see what else we can do there. But before we do that, and we will do that together, but before we do that, I bought a bunch of Noctua NFA8s, which are going into the back of the chassis, because apparently those are 80 millimeter holes. So I have two of those. I found that M.2 NVMe from Pinnacle, that one terabyte drive, which will slap in the one NVMe spot that we have. And I have something extra, because I don't know if you remember, but uh, during the second or third episode, I did not connect the two USB ports in the front because I didn't have another USB 2 port on the motherboard. And I still don't, uh, but what I do have is a USB 3 Type A port. So what I bought myself here is an adapter for an internal USB 2, yes, to regular USB A, which seems to be USB 2, but I don't really care because I can slip this into the one single port on the motherboard and we have the two USB ports in the front, which I need for the installation but whew, okay this day was hard enough let's hope everything goes fine now so let's slap in the fence the NVMe and then we can start looking at that ASUS control center thing and of course we are going with the blue color you won't really see it once I close the case down but in my heart I know it is blue 
Where are the closest PVM ports? <laughs> oh, they are all the way down there. Oh, th there are another two up here. And you into here. Now there is another thing that I need to change about uh, our setup here for today, which was quite kind of unexpected. So I told you before I wanted to record the screen using my Elgato external recorder. A, it works perfectly fine. I tried it out multiple times. Works perfectly. However, the server in here only has a VGA output. And what I tried is this 10 Eros VGA to HDMI adapter, but for the love of God, the Elgato machine doesn't want to take that. No matter what I tried, it doesn't want to record or even like pass through VGA. It doesn't work. However, I will certainly need to somehow record the video output of what we are doing here. So I think I'm out of options and I need to put in a GPU just to have like a regular HDMI out. Unfortunate, but I guess for the creation of the whole thing for that period it's necessary so what i'm going to do is move the dual port network card one slot down just until we are done recording this whole series and once we are done i'm just going to remove the gpu again and pretend like i never did that and if you believe i would slap in a 4090 no it's this 1650 my old really old Palette GTX 1650. It, I think this is the first GPU that I bought for this channel, like as let's build in it, like for a 500 euro budget build or something. It was years ago, but the benefit of having that card is that the heatsink is too big to slap it in there. God damn it. I need to move the network card two slots down. <sighs> okay, but now it should work. Okay, so the benefit of having that card uh, in contrast to a 4090 is it doesn't require any external power. So I can power it using uh, like the PCIe connection only, uh, which helps me because then I don't need to, to route any further cables. So that's that. Whew. Okay, everything is ready, I believe. So we can boot it up for the second time for me, uh, which actually I don't need. I can also just use the internal a IPMI system without booting the system. Like the chip which is doing that is running no matter what I do, as long as there is power. Like there is even a, a LED on the board that uh, signifies that the thing is working. So I could theoretically access it, but I wanted to do it live with the server running so that we can hear when the fans go down. Or they won't. We, we, we will see. We will see if I uh, will manage to do that. So let's close the server and uh, boot it up. Get ready for that nice sound. I guess it's not that loud uh, on the microphone, but in person it's... And it gets louder and quieter. It moves up and down a bit. Ooh! Well, they are not that... Yeah, they aren't spinning particularly quick, but we will see that later. Let's try to access the internal system. Oh yeah, he stops once and then boots up again every time. I don't know why. I guess server stuff. And this was what I was seeing all morning. Basically all morning. Ta-da! Isn't that the standard password? <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm just reading through the manual of that ASMB9 IKVM. Uh, can somebody explain to me why section 2 is all about installing what seems like a, a bootable version of it on a VM? Why would you do that? What would you control? Or is it just like like for testing purposes? That's so weird. Uh, so where is my standard account? Yeah, and even in the manual it doesn't say HTTPS, it just says HTTP. Or maybe you need to slap an HTTP or HTTPS, I don't know. But if you just do like uh, the IP, it doesn't show up. It's incredible. No, it's admin admin. What the hell? So okay, here we are. We can reset the server apparently. We can power it off or on. We are running on version 2.031, whatever the hell that means. But I do know that the BIOS is the most uh, recent one that exists. I did that this morning for nothing because apparently I can do all of this also in here. Okay, doesn't do anything. Uh, let's take a look at the sensor section. CPU 1 presence detected. That's that's already something good. That's great. Oh wow, we can even see the voltage drops. Ooh, 
we have like a dozen temperature sensors and all the fans are running at 800 except all the front ones except for oh no because the weren't the fans of the chassis the silverstone fans weren't they controlled by the front um like the temperature sensor on i believe they were so i can control them like that i believe oh that's interesting and i will need to figure a way out to uh make them run slower because they are incredibly oh, they're not so loud I, we had fans that were louder but i don't want to have them yelling like that all the time okay where do we have fan settings here fan control uh auto mode full speed mode what does full speed mode do and i guess now at least the two noxia fans and the arctic fans will run quicker yeah you can see now 2200 for the two rear fans the noxia ones 2100 for the ones on the arctic freezer for you so we can control at least these fans now i would really love to be able to also control the three here so by software at least okay you know what i have an idea yeah let's power off the server it's so cool that i can do that without touching it and then powering it on again why that ipmi system is keeping on with with everything that's so freaking cool but what i'm going to do not necessarily like the best thing ever but i'm going to do it regardless i'm going to disconnect the three silverstone fans from these <laughs> like 30 pwm connections in the front that are connected to that blade which has a temperature sensor on there and everything because i believe 800 is like minimum they won't spin any slower than that and i don't want that and i don't want to replace them yet so what i'm going to do is take them off all three of them and uh, use one of our extensions the pwm extensions to connect them to the motherboard and then start the system back on and try to control them via software because at least for the duration of the video i need to make them spin slower at least for now and i won't be using a splitter which i could because those are some really heavy fans and i don't know if uh, i can run all, all three of them using a single uh, connector without blowing anything so three extensions for three fans oh, this is and i'm slowly running out of extensions <sighs> Okay, all three fans are now connected to the motherboard instead of that uh, blade in the front. Let's close this again. And if I now go to sensor, I believe I should have more fans there. Oh, I have nothing. But let's give it a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, in the meantime, I can show you something, because what I can also do is do this remote control viewer. Oh yeah, I will need Java for that. Yeah, there was something said about you need Java for it to run. So apparently there is a way that I can um, view what's going on on, uh, on a theoretical screen without having a theoretical screen. So I can see like the whole BIOS thing essentially when it loads up and even do stuff in BIOS without being even physically present at the system and that's really freaking cool. But apparently that doesn't work on an iPad, which sucks but what can I do? Okay, the sensors are back and I can still see three fans. Why are there only three fans? One fan six. So at least front fan 6 should be showing up, but it is not. What can I do in fan control? Okay, I have zones. That did something. Oh, finally. Now only the two in the back are spinning quite quickly. And the last one. I know that everything is running. I'm basically doing four times the same thing and setting them to 40, but... I can do this later on, like, in a very good way. Peace and quiet, finally. Uh, so, so far, the system works. Oh, the system, the, um, the IKVM from ASUS here, this IPMI system seems to be working perfectly fine, or at least I was able to do what I wanted to do, which is, uh, ooh, critical sensor. Okay, the front, okay, apparently the front fan stopped spinning because it was running too low, and now it just 
says 300 RPM, but the curve definitely says something else. Okay, so there are like uh, sensors or critical sensors, critical like uh, thresholds that I can set where <laughs> everything will start uh, shining red, which is definitely interesting. And we will see more about that once I can play a bit around with the system. But so far, everything looks great. The CPU is still sitting at uh, 36 degrees and we have on all the temperature sensors roughly 30 degrees. So we are fine right now. And I guess at this point we can start installing Freenas on there because it is finally quiet. Oh my god. Doesn't this work maybe? No? Maybe it doesn't Chrome. Yeah, no, it also doesn't work over Chrome, but I will then probably for the next episode uh, install some sort of mini PC here just to have a, a regular Windows running Java and then I will try to do the Freenas installation without physically attaching uh, a monitor to the server. However, this also means that me installing the GPU was completely useless. Like There was no point doing it if I can do it remotely or completely remotely. Uh, which, okay, yeah, then I did something for nothing. But uh, I will try to, to get the second system to run before removing the GPU. Not that I need to install it back in later on. Now, the last thing I wanted to do before we end this, let me just check first. Yeah, so far it doesn't seem like I can uh, use the IPMI to detect how many hard drives are actually detected. Like or have any sort of overview of uh, the hardware that is in there. Like it, it tells me that there is a, a CPU, yes, it tells me how much voltage is going through where and, and how, how hot everything is. But what it doesn't say is, oh, I can, here I have the, all the fans, I can no enable the sensors. Anyway, what I can do is see how many hard drives, what CPU is in there, what GPU is in there. I, I apparently I can't have like any hardware, um, any level of hardware control, which okay, but uh, we may be able to do that if we use that remote control system. So that's what I'm going to try to do now, set everything up so that for the next episode, we can get started installing the OS on here and yeah. Seems like the day is uh, starting to get better, which makes me particularly happy. But for today, thank you for bearing with me through this shit show, which I had to endure this morning. But uh, we are making progress, finally progress again. I'm happy about that. But thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffering and I guess see you on the next one. Bye.